Welcome to the House Edge Sports Network, the pulse of youth sports. What's up, everybody? Tyler McLaren from the HESN Podcast. Another hockey show coming right at you, episode 5. Thanks for joining us today. We are going to be talking with the owner, general manager, and head coach of the Ottawa Junior Sens. They have been one of the best teams over the last three years in the CCHL. Um, The last two years have been head coached by Martin Dagenet as GM and owner as well. And they have been probably the the second most consistent team in those two years. They went uh, Two years ago, they went to the semifinals and lost to Pembroke in Game 7. You guys can check out that video that we have on the HSN uh, YouTube channel. I think it's just called Game Seven. It's a it's a great video that uh, we put together, just showing the drama of the game. It's uh, it was a really really intense game. It was a great thing. And then last year they ended up losing in the finals to Carlton Place. Now, what they have accomplished over the last two years isn't just impressive because they've they've done so well. It's impressive because number one, a lot of people didn't think that they can do it. They didn't think that. Um, that Martin was maybe ready as a first-time owner and uh, general manager and head coach to have all those duties on his plate to be successful, but he he proved all the people wrong. Not that I specifically heard anybody say that he couldn't do it, but when somebody gets into a position where they've never done something before, you can only assume that maybe they took a little too much off. And what he's accomplished has been unbelievable the kids and the athletes that he's been bringing in and sending off which is obviously the most important part of the cchl is bringing in some good kids and making sure they're going off somewhere else after um it is really unbelievable and uh, we're gonna have a nice chat with him about what's going on with the junior sends and what they're what they're up to this year and what they have been up to in the past don't forget, everybody, you guys can get more information about the CCHL. You can go to centraljuniorhockeyleague.ca. They got tons of stats. The schedule's all up there. It's a great website to get all the information that you need. Um, if you don't know where to listen to these hockey podcasts, they can be listened to directly from the centraljuniorhockeyleague.ca website. But we also would rather you go to the HESN youtube channel where you can watch them there we have a playlist designed specifically for the the uh, hockey podcast so you guys can go there and and, uh, listen to those um hockey is a wonderful wonderful sport as we all know but the cchl really really does it well and uh, i want to encourage more people to go to your local teams and watch the game pay the money Pay the 10 bucks to go watch the games. I don't know, 12 bucks some places, 8 bucks others. I don't know exactly what the prices are, but this is great hockey. And I want to see more people become fans of the CCHL. I can guarantee you that if you go to a game and you sit really close and you feel the intensity and you watch how great these these hockey players are, you're going to become a, a huge fan. And uh, the CCHL appreciates every fan going to the game because this impacts their bottom line this is this is money they need to to make sure that they can help these kids get on to the next level this is a wonderful wonderful league that uh, really really has done some fantastic things under the leadership and guidance for, of Kevin Abrams and the stability that they've had with the organizations we have guys like Carlton Place doing unbelievable things and Junior Sens doing unbelievable things and Pembroke has been very good over the past few years and Cumberland is on the up um Canada looks like they can be a real up-and-comer this year. We talked to Jeff Jordan there a few weeks ago, and it's going to be really exciting to see what they're doing. Cornwall is always good. Smith Falls has made some changes. So there is a lot of potential in the CCHL. And I, I forgot to mention Hawkesbury. These guys, this is the team I think they're going to be the biggest, I don't want to say surprise, but this is going to be the biggest mover and shaker this year. Hawkesbury Hawks, watch out. I think from what I'm hearing around, this team is going to be an unbelievable offensive hockey team this year. So make sure that you guys pay attention to the local teams in your community. Make sure you support these guys. It's great hockey. And I guarantee that if you do go to these games and do support them, you guys will become fans and you guys will be able to uh, follow the league much, much closer. Now, like I mentioned earlier, we're going to be, I'm going to be playing an interview with Martin Dagenet that I had earlier. Listen to what he has to say, because what he says is really, really important. Martin is a great guy. He's doing great things at the Ottawa Junior Sens. And I really like everyone to, to really understand 
the rec and uh, give the guy the recognition that he deserves. So listen to the interview. It's a great interview, and uh, I hope you enjoy it. Here's Martin Dagenet. Welcome to the House Edge Sports Network, the pulse of youth sports. All right, we are now joined by the owner, GM, and head coach of the Ottawa Junior Sens, Martin Dagenet. How are you doing today? Good, yourself? Fantastic. So what I wanted to talk about today is a little bit about uh, what you guys accomplished over the last few years and what you guys are looking to do moving forward. So why don't you tell everybody when you got involved with the Junior Sens and how you sort of got to become the owner, GM, and head coach over the last few years? Well, after spending uh, two years in Oxford as the coach and, and then the GM down there, I uh, came back to Ottawa, worked as an assistant coach under uh, Ray Dorval, who uh, was now in Oxbury. And uh, I did that for three years and uh, took over as the owner, uh, GM, and head coach uh, exactly two years ago. Uh, so and now we're entering our third season uh, with the current staff, and uh, all things are good. And we've uh, had two successful seasons, and we hope that we can uh, well, do the same thing this year. Now that that's exactly it. You guys have had two successful years, which is which have been amazing. Um, now I know two years ago you guys had a really good team, and last year there was a lot of uh, questions about what you guys could do. Could you repeat? Could you be better? You guys had a lot of young players. You guys lost a lot of veteran players. What is the outlook for the Junior Sens coming into this season? Well, on the back end, we're obviously a lot younger. Uh, I look at Merrick Rippon, who's 16, uh, Thomas Stevenson, 17, Edith Yangisong, also 17. Uh, so right away, you're, you know, it, it's very rare to see a team at the junior level to carry three defensemen that are 17 and younger. At the same time, we're very comfortable with, uh, with that because we feel these three guys will be uh, uh, you know, very good players in our league. Uh, so yes, young on the back end, but I think a bit bigger. Uh, puck movement will not be a problem. It will be physical. Uh, so we're fine at that position, especially with Lawson and White coming back, the trade of Bryce Diller. Uh, and we signed a kid from Buffalo, Craig McCain, the brother playing in the league with Cumberland last year. And, you know, we think will be a, a good power play guy for us too. Uh, up front, yes, we did lose, you know, some key guys. If I look at Jimmy Pearson, uh, Joey Sullivan, Dan Zarako, uh, Mitchell Gibson, uh, Greg Morales. Uh, I could name three, four other guys, but we do have a crop that, that came back and, you know, lead by, by Luke McCaw, Jaron Burke, who both guys are tremendous for us uh, in last year's playoff run. So, no, we're, we're comfortable and we're going to add some young players that will bring us energy. And I don't think, I don't think anything's going to change up front. We're going to run four lines and we've had success with that recipe in the last two years. And, We'll keep doing the same thing. And, and that's obviously you know, the return of AP and Andriano is huge for us. And um, we think he'll be the best goaltender in the league. So, uh, right away to have Ian back, I think it stabilizes uh, the entire uh, you know uh, five man defense unit. So, no, we'll, uh, we'll be okay. One thing that I that I'm always curious to know with the, you know the new the midget AAA and the junior A sort of amalgamation last season is how you look at recruiting prospects differently than you did before. Is there any? Are you more prone to use younger players now that you have an opportunity to see them closer up more often, or are you sort of more willing to let them sort of develop slower? So how is it different with the midget AAA involved with the junior A now? I don't think it changes much for us personally. We uh, Our midget staff did a heck of a job for us last season, and that's the reason why we're able to find you know, three, four, maybe five now, uh, U18 players. Uh, so, you know what, uh, bottom line is, it's it's about knowing where to send those players. Some, uh, you know, have to play Ninja AAA one year. Uh, other guys need to show us they can compete against older, bigger players. We want to send to Junior B for maybe one year. And they, we bring them to practice and they get that experience. And they can AP some games. But, no, I, honestly, I don't think it changes much. Um uh, you know, we're comfortable sending players to the, to, to, to junior B, like I said, uh, to our midget uh, triple-A coaches. And if we feel we're ready to make the jump, you know what? We, we always want to be kids on our team. Uh, obviously, it's always a tough draw in the city for a junior A club. So if we can get as many local players as we can, uh, obviously it's a plus. But 
at the same time, we want to make sure we have the, you know, the 23 best players available uh, that can help us uh, win. You know, In the CCHL, the last few years, there has been sort of the same groupings at the top and the same groupings at the bottom. Do you foresee this season sort of being status quo, or do you see some teams as some come-uppers this year? Well, obviously it's tough to, to know this right now because we're focused on what we do in Ottawa, and we're not really looking at other teams. I can tell you right now that CP will be near the top, if not at the top. I think Oxford with the group of fours they have coming back, uh, they will have the best, probably, offense in the league. I think it comes down for them to, 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 you know, to know what they recruited on the back end and if they're going to have solid goaltending because I know they lost both their goaltenders. So for me, these two teams right now uh, are the teams that, um, you know, we think are going to be near the top. Broadville made a lot of changes. Pembroke made a lot of changes. Uh, Smith Falls, tons of changes. Uh, Cumberland also. Uh, and then you got the teams that were, you know, from 8 to 12. Obviously, they're, they're all trying to improve. Uh, you know, Jeff Jordan's a great addition in Canada. Uh, Darcy Finley did a heck of a job in the team last year in the second half. Uh, and Kenville, again, I think offensively they have a very good team. Uh, and it's going to depend what they're able to add on their back end. So, uh, honestly, this year, I think every team knows that it's wide open. It was supposed to be wide open last year. It was a very tight season. The playoffs, I guess, weren't as good as people were expecting, except for maybe RFMEs and, and the finals. Uh, but other than that, they were short series. But this year, I really think it's the year that, you know, a lot of first-round matchups could go seven, and it should be interesting. But the CCHL, you lose so many players every year. Again, it's just so tough to know what to expect the following year. Yeah, it really, it really is. That's what I've noticed over the last few, the, the few seasons that we've been working from HSN is that you sort of you come in one year, you get to know all these guys, and you're like, oh, I can't wait to see this guy next year, and then all of a sudden you're like, oh no, this guy went here and this guy went there, and you know it's yeah. it is about development, right? You you don't want to yeah. you know as much as you can, you want to make sure that the kids use the CCHL as a stepping stone to forward their hockey career, whether that means going to a, a league somewhere else or going to do a prep school or going to NCAA or whatever it it might be. You have to accept sort of the good with the bad when it comes to new players because sometimes you you don't want to hold a guy back if playing the CCHL isn't the best thing for his for his development. No, exactly. Last year, I remember early in the season, we had signed uh, Nick McHugh and Ryan Cranford. And both of them went to OHL camps in early September during the showcase. And uh, we were told on a Sunday that both, both kids had signed at the OHL level. Obviously, they're tough players to replace. Young players, but very good players. Uh, but we were happy for both kids. Um, so it is part of the game. You lose players every year, but you're right. It's all about development. Uh, you do want to win a championship, but at the end, I'm not the one who's going to make a decision for a kid. If he wants to go play in the queue, if he wants to go play in the UHL, if he wants to go play in A before he turns 20, you know, that's just all. Oh, that's not mine. So we'll, we'll work with the players that are here, and uh, we'll be happy for, for the players that move on. Now, what I've been, I, we interviewed Jeff Jordan a couple weeks ago, and we asked, uh, we asked him this question. While we interview the coaches and the, uh, the sort of the, the brass from the organization, we're going to ask the same question: Is if you're going to name a couple guys that maybe the fans and the people out there might not know about, who are a couple guys that you think could be really big risers that play for the Junior Sens this year? Uh, good question. Based on what I saw at camp so far. Uh, I don't think anyone really sticks out, uh, especially new guys that people don't know about. Um, <clears throat> I can maybe say some of the young guys and look at a kid like Jackson Alexia and the uh, Ottawa kid that played in Toronto for two years. Now he's back in Ottawa. He's a 16-year-old. Uh, was drafted in the OHL uh, a few months ago. I think he can be very good. Um, you know, I look at the Sean Stevenson I talked about that are not guys that on the radar like Merrick Griffin is but again defensemen that in the, in the next two years could be you know uh, very good players in the league um, but again it, it's so early right now it's so tough to uh, to try and, and you know obviously uh, guess who's gonna who's gonna lead the way for us we, we did pick up two 20 year olds that uh, we think will help Nicolas Sanson from uh the Canadian 3A League and uh, <clears throat> Ivan who played in the 
AJ NHL last year in uh, in White Court. Um, we think these two guys will have an impact. So, um, yeah, I think that's that's the names that I think I would throw out right now. Uh, but again, so early uh, in preseason that it's just tough to know exactly uh, who's going to play a major role for us. Yeah, no, it definitely is early right now. Now, who do you guys who do you guys going to be playing the first uh, few games there at the showcase? Well, uh, I guess it's uh, it's a planned thing every year. We're playing CP on the Saturday, which is probably the game that everyone wants to come and, and watch. Which is fine with us. We want to play the best right from the start, and we play Spitz Falls on the Sunday and Cornwall on the Monday. So, uh, same schedule as the last two seasons, and then this is what we want. We're playing three very good teams, three very good programs right off the bat, and uh, you know, we're very happy about that. Well, you know what, Marte, we think that uh, we've been really, really happy to be working with the Junior Sens the last few years, and we're really, really happy to see the success that you guys have had. Um, personally, myself, getting to know some of the players over the last few years, maybe, not, sorry, not last year, the year before, what a great bunch of guys they had, and what a great organization you guys run there. I want to, you know, tip my cap to you and what you've accomplished, you and your staff, over the last few years, sort of, you know, obviously... Uh, you guys had some good years before, but the, the consistency that the last couple of years you guys have had has been fantastic. And uh, so many of the kids that you've had at the Junior Sens have gone on to do such great things over the last few years. And, and that's obviously you and your staff making sure that you guys are making the right decisions, you know, doing the right things and making sure the kids can make the right decision because of the lessons and all the stuff that you guys are teaching them. So my, my hat goes off to you guys there. I'm really excited to watch you guys play this year. We obviously love to, uh, love to follow the junior sends being, you know, I went to Hillcrest high school right down the street. So that was the team that I always would go watch whenever I watched junior, junior a hockey when I was younger. Um, so I want to say thank you for coming on the podcast. Thanks for letting people know what's going on. And uh, we definitely will be in touch with you over the next over the season, the next few weeks as well, once season gets started. And uh, we'll reconnect, and you guys can keep us up to date, and we'll go from there. Yeah, and, and thanks a lot, Tyler. And obviously, uh, I've said it before, the group of, of coaches that work with me, it, obviously it helps me a lot to... Uh, I can count on these guys, and I think they're a big part of the program, the volunteers, the players, their families. Uh, we have been very fortunate in the last two years to have good people uh, around the organization, and I think that's why we had success, and hopefully we can keep it going. So, yeah, thanks a lot. No problem, Coach. Thanks for your time, and we'll talk to you uh, in a few weeks. Perfect. All right. Once again, I'd like to thank Martin Dagenet for coming on the HESN Podcast, Episode 5 talking to us a little bit about what he's been up to and what the Junior Sens are looking forward to this season. Don't forget, September 3rd, Bell Sensplex. You can go to centraljuniorhockeyleague.ca to catch the schedule and the stats and uh, make sure you follow up on all the athletes who are signing at NCAA. They have a great um, sort of performance tracker to see who are the guys that are going to the next level so you can know all the guys and watch them once they move up levels. But the Auto Junior Sens do it the right way. What Martin has accomplished, him and his team and his uh, his squad, his coaches and volunteers, like he mentioned, has been really unbelievable. And uh, this is a, an organization that that uh, has been around for a long, long time. Like I mentioned, I went to Hillcrest High School, and growing up, I remember guys from my high school, uh, specifically Sean Roach, uh, shout out to you, uh, playing there. And uh, I went and watched a couple games, not because uh, of he was there, but just knowing that. There's great hockey to be played. It's right down the street from uh, from where I lived. It was a great, great showing that they always put on. And it's great hockey. It's great hockey and it's an affordable price. Um, and these kids are usually great athletes. They all have aspirations to become NCAA athletes. Most of them do anyways. And when you see the success of teams like the Ottawa Junior Sens and how much work they put into it and how great the kids end up doing once they go through the system, you really you really care more about these kids and you care more about watching the games because you want to see them do well. And the hockey's great. And the price is right. So get your butts off your chair. Go watch some hockey this winter. Remember, September 3rd, it all gets going. 
And uh, it's going to be a great year. It's going to be a great year, like Martin said. There's going to Carlton Place seems to be looking very strong as always. We know we know Coach Clark is ruthless with his uh, desire to to win and make kids uh, better and go on to the next level. So they're going to be a, a force to be reckoned with, like Martin said. Hawkesbury Hawks are probably going to have one of the best offenses. I think they have something like 15 returning players, which is almost unheard of in the CCHL. They're going to be a great team. Ottawa Junior Sands sounds like they're going to be right right with it again. We know that the last year, I know they started a little slow, but once they turned it on, they were, they were tough to stop. They went all the way to the final. And uh, we talked to Jeff Jordan, Canada, and Cumberland, and it's just going to be a great year. So make sure that you guys stay tuned into the HESN podcast. All the hockey shows will be up on the YouTube channel on a playlist so you can, you can stay in touch with what's going on in the hockey world and check out the interviews. If you haven't already, make sure you subscribe to the HESN YouTube channel. We are looking for more people. We want more people to support what's going on. This is about the kids. We are the pulse of youth sports in this city, and we are just getting started. I'm telling you guys, what has been happening over the last month since we've got this podcast going is nothing short of remarkable. We have basically increased our subscribers by 20% over the last couple weeks. It's, It's really been... An unbelievable, uh, an unbelievable showing of support by by people all over the city, uh, complimenting us on what we're doing and, and listening and uh, and uh, contributing their opinions through through social media and uh, and on YouTube. So I want to thank everybody for listening. I want to thank everybody for watching. And uh, next podcast is going to be episode six, and it's probably going to be our first episode. Actually, not probably. It is going to be our first episode for Nakafa Power Rankings, which is everybody's favorite podcast. We're going to be talking about all the action from week one in Nakafa, and we really think that we're going to have a great, great Nakafa season. So make sure you guys tune in next week when we got episode six coming right at you, and that's going to be the power ranking. So thank you very much for listening to the HSN Podcast, episode five. I'm Tyler McLaren. Peace. Welcome to the House Edge Sports Network, the pulse of youth sports.